that's 1770, 1780. Yeah. And now here comes, as we go into the beginning of the 19th century, and yeah. into the cusp, as it were, you say sentiment and romanticism. Mm -hmm. and, I, and romanticism is a reaction to what? First, well, what is romanticism? Uh, it is the glorification of the individual aspiration to a full, complete realization, throwing off all rules, all dogmas, all constraints whatsoever. Romanticism. It's. Uh, um, uh, That's true as for a Tchaikovsky uh, yeah. sonata as it is for mm -hmm. a piece of poetry from the yes, time. Yes, absolutely. Um, there's a sense of of not really belonging in Romanticism. One of, the, one of the principal themes in Romanticism is wandering, wandering, rootlessness, uh, not really belonging anywhere, going from one place to another place, just looking for self-fulfillment, like self-expression, something that, one, that, that one can realize oneself in, uh, apart from all the constraints of society and law there's a kind of outlawry about romanticism. Right. It's uh, the Shelleys, the Byron, yes. the boys on drugs writing poetry Absolutely. down in a small village. Yes, 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 all of that. And, and all of that music that bursts out uh, from there. And sentiment and romanticism, what's the connection between there? Well, the sentiment, sentiment, sentimentality was a kind of harbinger of romanticism. And then romanticism takes over and it's become full blown emotionalism. Um, all the emotions just given free reign and exalted in because they're individual and they're mine. So what sort of dances or pieces of music or um, architecture would you be showing? Well, then students? comes the social dance, the waltz. Right. Yes, I have the waltz, which is a very sexy dance and was uh, often banned. And not French. And not French. Not French at all. No, no. Viennese. And, so uh, the Austro-Hungarian Empire is... Yes, is oh, you bet. Yes, yes, yes. The polka, the mazurka, all of those. And of course... Sexually risky yep. names yes, and you bet. movements. Oh, yes, yes, with, with odd rhythms and nothing regular about them. <laughs> so... And were they seen as sexually risque by uh, the yeah. older generation at the oh, time? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. You, yeah, you actually touched people. Yes, because dancing up to that point, yeah. the, the couples didn't touch. No, no. At most, they Absolutely did maybe not. that. Yes, yeah. Here, suddenly, we we're hand on back and Absolutely. waist. Absolutely, yeah. And palm to palm. Yes. As holy palmers kiss. Absolutely, and uh, you, uh, you need to, to have that kind of uh, physical connection with the partner to know where you are going on the floor. That was a whole new thing. And to be able to, to, to come to that close contact. And what plays are lining up with this very romantic period? Well, there are a number of plays. The, the, in, in the English 19th century, the, the theater was very alive, but it didn't command the, the greatest writers. But that doesn't mean there's not an awful lot of wonderful stuff that you can perform in the 19th century. Um, there's a, 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 a remarkable play from quite early in the century called The Patrician's Daughter. It's in verse. It's about ordinary middle-class people. And uh, the one sort of anti-hero is um, an ambitious young politician who doesn't quite belong in the class of the young lady that he is interested in and who is interested in him. Um, Patrician's daughter is 1820? Something about that, yes. Something in that area. It's a, in form, it harks back to the older kind of play, but it is about the newer material, the newer interests. And it is in verse. And up to, through the fourth act, it works really remarkably well. Unfortunately, it, the whole storyline falls pretty much a part in the fifth act. He couldn't sustain it in the fifth act, which mitigates against its being uh, attempted, I think, now in a modern full production. So but in terms of acting style, then, the rhetoricalism is still 
existing. It's there. Yes, absolutely. It's it's less but there's rigid. It's less restricted. It's it's more uh, messy, if you like. It's bigger, and because sentimentality has yes. has already entered in the oh, yeah. romantic sense. And so. uh, absolutely, and it's designedly artificial without being untruthful it's artificial it's it's but not as artificial as baroque uh, no and not in quite the same way how is it differently artificial it's more emotional it's more overtly emotional oh. and exulting in in the emotion exulting in the emotion and the literature this time is well, we're getting some of the, the novels of uh, George Eliot and um, Thackeray, Dickens, of course, all of that very melodramatic stuff that, that Dickens exults in, mm -hmm. those long, long, tearful scenes and so on. All of that stuff is coming into it. Um, there's, of course, the, the, the big hit that made Henry Irving's career, Leopold Lewis's The Bells, which is a fabulous melodrama about a man who has committed a murder some years ago and has got away with it and has, has founded his fortune and his position on the money that, that he was able to steal from this rich Jew whom he murdered years and years and years ago. And now at the height of his career when he's just about to uh, marry off his daughter and, and everything is coming together for him, he begins to have these nervous fits in which he hears the jangling of the, 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 the sleigh bells that were... But the, plays from these periods are rarely done, 1820s, 1830s. We don't see much of them. We're not into the Colleen Bonds. We're not into the Boussicot's world. Nope. And it's a pity. Because God knows they play superbly, let me tell you. And I get my kids doing them, and they just tear away with them. They are fabulous, but you have to play melodrama in the same way that you play farce, dead serious. It is serious. And only then can it grab you. As it does, and you have to sub you have to submit to it. And are you here some exercises that you give these students to take them to this serious rhetorical melodramatic place? I let the words do it, largely. I let the words do it, and they gradually come to trust it, and then to exult in it. It's amazing how willing they can be. I, I don't have, I've rarely ever had active resistance to these things. They, they have such fun with them. Is that because they're slipping into another mask, another period? They slip beneath the surface so they leave themselves behind yes. in a way and are playing at ease and safely within. They, yeah, they leave some of their, their own assumptions and prejudices behind them. And they learn what fun it is as Perry says, all you say to them is, act, act. <laughs> and it's what I keep saying, this is what brought you to theater school in the first place. This is what you wanted to do all along. Come on. This is the real thing. Let loose. Let loose.